Hi, my name is Alia from Minika El Masad. Today I'm going to explain one of the famous questions for Fact Tower. As you can see below, this is the question that require you to do to calculate the tower height you should see. So in the as in the questions, acetone is being absorbed by water in Fact Tower having a cross sectional area, which is S equal to 0 0.186 meters square at the temperature of 293 Kelvin and 101 and 32 kPa. So the inlet air contains of acetone with 2.6 mole percent and the outlet stream contains 0 0.5 mole percent of acetone. The, glass, the, gl the gas flow is 13.65 kg mole inert air per hour which means it's a free inert. The pure water inlet flow is 45.36 kg mole water per hour. So the coefficient given are the single mass coefficient of the gas which is 3.78 to the power of negative 2 kilogram mole per second meter cube and single mass transfer coefficient for the liquid is 6.16 to the power of negative 2 kilogram mole per second meter cube lastly the gradient for the equilibrium line is 1.186 these are the equations you require to calculate which is to get the tower height using the single mass transfer coefficient in gas using the single mass transfer coefficient in liquid and the last one you have to use the overall mass transfer coefficient in gas these are the main required equations you need in order to calculate all the three equations this is how the flow diagram of back tower will look like we have the liquid inlet stream with 45.36 kmol per hour that we get from the equations and the other the outlet of the liquid stream which is the pure solvent will be the same and for the inlet it's going to be denoted with v1 and we got the v inner equal to 13.65 kilo mole per hour from the equations and the outlet stream which we don't know of the v2 but we know the mole fraction of the acetone which is 0 0.005 mole for the outlet and for the inlet is y1 equal to 0 0.026 mole we're going to start by drawing the equilibrium line by using the the given gradient which is 1.186 from this gradient you have to get the y and you have to get the x value by using the equation of linear equation y equal to mx you know the m so when your y is equal to 0 your x is going to be 0 and when your y is equal to 0 0.03 your x is going to be 0 0.025 this is what you're going to use to draw the equilibrium line in your graph to get x1 we're going to use the equation the material balance for the back tower which is L inert times 2 the x2 over 1 minus x2 plus 2 the V inert times with y1 divided to 1 minus y1 equal to L inert times with x1 over 1 minus x1 plus V inert times to the y2 over 1 minus y2 the L inner is 45.36 that we got from the equations and the same as the V inner which is 13.65 kg mole per hour and X and Y that we got from the equation. For X2 we assume it to be zero because there is no acetone in the liquid inner. From the material balance of the back tower we're going to get X1 equal to 0 0.00648. From X and Y that we have calculated, we can assume that this is a process where dilute tessellation is used because both mole fractions of X and Y are less than 10%. So the operating line will be a straight line. To draw the operating line, we know for X1, we got from the calculation which is 0 0.0065 and the Y1 that we got from the equation which is 0 0.026. 4.2 we have x2 that we assume as 0 and for y2 that we got from the equation that is 0 0.005 and this is how the graph going to look like with the 
equilibrium line and the operating line. Now we're going to proceed with drawing the slope in order for us to get the value of xi1 and yi1. By using the PM1 trial 1 equations, we're going to calculate the slope and the equation is negative single coefficient of liquid divide with 1 minus s1 and then divide again with single coefficient of gas divide to the 1 minus y1 as you can see and the m the slope that we got is negative 1.6 using the calculated slope we can get the y intersection of the slope and then you're gonna using the y equal to ms plus c with the gradient of negative 1.6 and 0.1 with a shave 0.0065 and 0.025 you will get the trans the y intersection of slope 1 is equal to 0.0364 so with what we draw we're gonna get x i1 we're gonna get y i1 and we're gonna get y i star from this slope the first slope we're gonna get the x i1 we're gonna get the y i1 and then we're gonna get the y 1 star and this is what we got x i1 y i1 and y 1 star from the graph that I show below, we're gonna calculate it. We're gonna calculate the value for one minus y i m and one minus x i m to calculate the p m trial two. For one minus x i m, we're gonna use these equations, and for the y minus y i m, we're gonna use this equation, and this is the value that we will get. We're gonna use these values to calculate the PM1 trial to, to ensure that the slope that we get is accurate. So after the calculations, we got the same slope so we can stop the iteration and we can consider that the slope we got is accurate. Now we're going to go with the PM2 trial 1 to get the value of X12 and XI2 and YI2 using these equations. And again, we got the same slope, means we can use the same slope, we only need to find the y intersection of the second slope. Using the at, again using the y equal to mx plus c with the gradient of negative 1.6 and using the 0.2 which is 0 and 0 0.005, we're going to get the second intersection at 0 0.005. And to know where the x of the second slope is going to be, the same equation again of the y and x plus c. When y equal to 0, we're going to get x 0 0.03. And this is your slope 2 will be. I'm going to connect the point 2. Touching the equilibrium line and to the calculated x point. From the drawing of the second slope, we will get x i2, y i2, and y2 star. From the graph, using the intersection of the slope with the equilibrium line, you will get the x i2, you will get the y i2, and you will from the point 2, touching the equilibrium line you will get the y2 star and now to complete the question a you have to find the value for y minus y i m we using these equations and this is what i got y minus y i m equal to 0 0.005883 for b we need the x x i m using these equations and the value that I got is 0 0.003762. This is your complete graph. It's gonna look like and this is slope one. This is slope two. 
this is the equilibrium line this is the operating line and looking here this is point 1 this is point 2 and the value that you got from the first slope is yi1 si1 and y1 star from slope 2 you will get the x i2 you will get the y i2 and you will get the y2 star now we're going to press it with the calculation of tower height using the single mass coefficient of the liquids because we were arranged the question just now we only need to fill in the value of the required unknown so for v average we have to calculate the v1 we have to calculate v2 because v average is v1 v from the inlet 1 plus with the v of inlet 2 divide by 2 so for v1 because we have the v inner given from the question we have to divide with the y minus y1 and we will get 0 0.00389 kilogram per mole and you have to change the unit to per second because our single mass of units in seconds and for v2 v inner divide to 1 minus y1 from these two value you can calculate the v average that will be 0 0.00385 kilogram mole per second now we have all the value that we need to calculate tower height using the single mass coefficient of gas you just need to fill in all the unknown and you got the C which is 1.9547 m meter for B is the same as before but the L inner is pure it's for the pure solvent it's always the same for the liquid inlet because it's the same gonna come up from the from stream 1 to stream 2 so if we plus L1 plus L2 divided by 2 is going to be the same because both value are the same. So we just need to fill in all the unknowns and you will get C equal to 1.900 million. You can see the value are almost the same. The last one is to calculate the tower height Z using the overall mass coefficient of the liquid. To complete this question, 1 minus y star m and y minus y star m is needed so by using this you will get the y minus y star m and by using this equation you will get the value of y minus y star m once you got the values you can calculate the overall mass transfer coefficient of the gas by using this equation you just need to rearrange it and then you will get the ky prime a once we got the value for the overall mass coefficient of the liquid you can proceed by filling all these equations with the value that we have calculated here we got 1.9297 thank you